Hello everyone, we are here on a beautiful uh, Sunday in Montreal uh, talking to Van Hester about a very uh, difficult but important subject, uh, cancer. It's not beautiful. Well, today. Let's pretend it is. Oh, okay. So let's go right uh, into the, the subject. Um, so you were diagnosed with uh, cancer a while ago. Uh, can you share with us what was your first reaction, what was going through your mind when you heard about uh, that credit uh, diagnosis? I didn't, I hadn't thought of this, I haven't thought of this yet. Um, let me remember it. First of all, it was, uh, it was less than two years ago. Um, let me, the first thing that went through my mind was, I knew it because I had felt a pain for a while um, and so my first reaction was oh uh, yeah I knew this I, I knew it I knew it I knew it I knew it wasn't benign I knew it couldn't be um, just something that wasn't uh, to be taken seriously from the start and I had to convince my doctors uh, I have a very good doctor thank God really who believed me when I said I need to go see a specialist and if this specialist doesn't believe me I need to see another specialist because I know that something is wrong with me and she believed me and she sent me to basically she referred me to go see anybody that I needed to see that's just very lucky um, but my first thought was I knew it I knew it because it had been brewing in my mind uh, can I tell you about my second thought uh, sure my second thought was I am now at the age um, where um, at, this is the same age that where, when my mother was diagnosed with cancer and she died from it a year later and I thought oh shit maybe I have those genes it's not the same cancer obviously but I, I just thought shit maybe it's just the family uh, historics and she was the only one to die young but still, what if I had, you know, it's, it's a lottery game. The, your genes are just, it's a lottery. So I thought, what if I'm exactly like my mother? And that was terrorizing because I spent my whole life thinking about my mother's death and how I didn't want to die young. So did you seriously think you might uh, die soon? Uh, of course. I thought... I thought maybe this is it and maybe they're going to tell me that um, I, I mean we're still I'm, I'm still not officially in remission I will be in January but I thought maybe um, they're gonna operate me and you know the story uh, my father had cancer but much later he was in his 80s so that's very different um, I thought maybe they're going to sort of tell me uh, that you know now they've operated and that you know, the, the tumor, the major tumor is out, but has it metastasized, has it, we, we, and you know, slowly, you know, I'm just gonna get sicker and sicker, and I thought maybe this is gonna be like my mother at the end, uh, you know, after a cycle of treatments and so on and so forth, I'm just gonna get weaker and weaker and then pass. Yes, I thought it, it was possible. Dying doesn't really scare me in the sense that we're all, what are we, it's nothing, it's like, so what if I die? There's a lot of other humans, or the Earth, Earth is clearly overpopulated, so what's one le more or less? But still, there's the thing where you want to cling to your own and say, shit, I'm, I'm still too young, because I don't think I'm that... Uh, I'm, I'm, I just don't feel like I'm done yet. I have, I have a lot of other things to, that I want to do, so... So, speaking of which, how did it affect your life in the sense of, you know, if it was me, I would imagine you know, I would try to do um, as many things uh, as quick as possible just in case the worst happens or how do you, would you look at... Uh, did, did you still think of making long-term projects or... Uh, yeah. uh, my first decision was to alter almost nothing. Uh, I learned one wonderful, wonderful uh, thing that you suspect but only when you're pushed to the limit you kind of... You, you, you get to really, uh, you, you really ask yourself these questions. You say them on a regular basis. You say, I say, oh, I do what I like and I'm happy about my life the way it is and I wouldn't change a thing. I even had a song 
on the, the first album that we had with Glimmer called Wouldn't Change a Thing. And so this was the test. Would you change something? And the answer was no. I'm very happy with all the things that I did the way I did them. And that includes the wasting of time because I've wasted a lot of time. Uh, I don't think it's waste, but I've had a lot of moments of doing nothing in my life. And I enjoy doing nothing. And I, I, I'm a very strong advocate for uh, not laziness, but taking your time to do things. And um, so, I, no, I, I, I decided to not change the way I lived. And that was my first decision after the diagnosis. The second thing I thought, the, the, the second move I made was, I guess, uh, less uh, interesting for you today. Um, in fact, the treatments and the whole process, it's not like you get a diagnosis and then you're sick and then you die. It's, they treat you and you have to go each month and you get more and more tired and each time you're a bit more scared or sometimes you're more vulnerable, sometimes less. And it's a very long process because it takes about two years before they actually officially say that you're in remission. I, I, I could have done more uh, in, in these last two years, but I, I took my time. Some days I was extremely depressed and yes, I'd stay, I'd stay in and, and not do much. I, I always write songs, but I, we took our, quite a while to finish this uh, Ambitions and Happiness album. Uh, sometimes I wasn't well enough, so I didn't go into the studio with Jerome and then I got better and we, we finished it. I took a long six, six, seven weeks off last year also. I went on holiday. That's something I never would have done. Uh, and I actually met someone and got engaged, but that's, I won't. Oh, I won't congratulations. Thank you. So, um, uh, so did this whole episode make you uh, think about uh, things you should have done differently in your past or have having any regrets? As I said, or? no, I, I don't find that I have even the time that I, you know, in, in some to, to, to others eyes wasted, I, I'm happy that I did. Uh, it wasn't a waste for me. I, I spent, I had had no childhood or, or almost not. And in my um, early adult life, I took a lot of time to reflect and read and go out and party way too much but was it no it wasn't so I'm, I'm happy that I did all those things so how was uh, how uh, and then what I started the... working and I started working hard but later good, good. So, so what was the reaction of the people around you would they treat you any differently like uh, because you were sick or did they have like would they have any pity or Oh, it's you know a what very I mean. Strange thing. People react. There's, um, I think that, well, it gets you closer or further from the people who are around you. Um, I've had some people who couldn't really react to it and who were basically even a little bit, uh, I would say, cold about it. And and that's one reaction, and I think that comes from fear. And then, oh, I've had a, f a flood of, of very nice people around me. I, was, I, I, I had friends that I didn't even suspect. Um, in, I found friendship in, a, in just regular acquaintances that were very, very surprising. And I, I was one of the lucky ones. I had people, you know, I had people calling me up and doing things for me and, and bringing food and and, I was, and there was like on a, on a, it's a regular cycle of people Monday this one comes Tuesday the other one comes and I got I, I just got very very lucky that way I know this is luxury because some people are completely alone and I don't know how they do it the support helped me however in the end there is an amount of depression that really nobody understands you just have to live that alone I think I, I know that I was thinking a lot about my parents during that, those moments. My mother, my God, what, what, what was she going through knowing that she had such a young child and she was passing? And I thought about my father who died much later, but you're, he's, you're still going through those same, I think, each, we're all the same in, in many ways, I and mean, we probably all have the same thoughts. That others can't understand, they try to help, but how can they understand? They're not living it. So. No, that's, uh, that's all very interesting, but we're uh, nearing the re end of our time. So, uh, one last question yeah. for you. How, yes. how does this uh, whole episode has changed you, uh, your personality? Are you a different person today than you were before? I'm in the... M 
I can't tell you now yet because it's not over. Uh, I know that I'm changing. Um, in, in that, at the moment, I, I can't. I have a very hard time living outside of the present. So um, I don't know what the effect will be in the long term, but I think that very important things are happening. I, I know that some of my relationships have, have completely ended; new ones have come in. I, I don't know. I'll have to. We'll have to talk in about three years, and then I can really tell you how it's affected me. At the moment, I'm too close to it to know. Sure, it will be our pleasure. So, uh, Van, thank you very much for your time, and we hope to talk to you again soon. And we hope how that. How about asking me how to test your balls? <laughs> Yes, maybe that's uh, that's a good idea indeed for all our friends who, who wouldn't know. Uh, if you can tell us very quickly. Well, um, the, uh, I, I, testicular cancer is, is like it's like breast, but you have to make that you have to do the test. You have you should you should test your own on a regular basis. That's how I found out. I was uh, in the shower and I had a pain and I felt a lump, and you just have to you have to squeeze them and you have to feel. You know, are they the same? They're probably not the same exact shape or, or, or dimension, but if you feel something hard in it that, that's, that wasn't there before, uh, apparently you're supposed to do the test once a month or something like that. Uh, but I, I knew, I, I was like, this is not normal. And luckily, I was in tune enough with my body to actually notice that it was, not only was it there and abnormal, but growing because two weeks later it had grown so and I felt it I and mean, it wasn't it wasn't like one of those things oh you're dreaming no I really so you know like the women do the breast exam uh, guys should do the self you know uh, touching uh, in the warm shower or bath test quite regularly because um, you don't want that to uh, turn into stomach cancer it sort of evolves and goes up Sure, and yeah. uh, the message, I guess, is uh, it could happen to anybody. It can happen. I mean, I, 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 uh, it's completely right. We, we th I thought it only affected early teens, or and, and in fact, not. Uh, apparently, until you're 40, you're not in the safe. Um, after 40, the cases are extremely rare. So, guys, you know, don't be afraid of touching it. Okay, so thank you very much for that again, and uh, have have a nice uh, Sunday, and we'll talk to you soon, thank and you. we wish you the best of luck. Thank you.